in the stale reality of a morphine-dripped hospital room, I realized how easily memories can be plucked from man. As simple as claiming a ripened flower from its roots, and I can't help but think that my great-grandfather, all dry and weathered and wilting, seems more like a blossom in a vase than a blooming bud. I'm just glad God didn't pick you in your prime. He waited until you were wisened enough to forget. But somewhere between the Alzheimer's and the sedatives, you gave me what might be your last piece of right-minded wisdom. After a brief conversation about my niece outgrowing her infantile shoes, I asked if needed anything. All you said was, room to grow. I don't know about y'all, but my kindergarten teacher never contained my crayon coloring to a geometric black box. Mr. My angel who disguised her heaven-crusted wings with good job stickers and motherly hugs, she taught me that my self-portrait, you know, the ones with that empty abyss of invisible front teeth, wasn't just a Crayola scribble, but it artistically imposed as many questions as Mona Lisa's seductive smile. Chanel and Versace were nameless souls compared to Miss Williams my third grade fashion icon, because she was the reason I stuffed crimson and leaf green letters down post office chutes, praying they would teleport to the icicle mailbox in the north so on December 25th, 2005, a hand sculpted replica of my teacher's onyx leather boots would be waiting there to greet me at the tree. But she wasn't just my fashion icon. She was an engineer. We built foundations of multiplication tables, and we deconstructed phrases like, I can't, but it was Ms. Bats, my fifth grade sorcerer who spiraled my ideas out into the world, unleashing Pandora's box. So I decided to make a list of all the things I never wanted to forget. I put math among the cha-cha slide, and that time I went to juvie. Towards the top, I put how it feels to sing in harmony and how I remember my grandfather preaching. It seemed as if he tattooed scriptures on his tongue because I could hear God whenever he spoke. I had a tie for a second on my list. Just three above carnal pleasures, and one above theater I wrote, reading and writing. See, she held out pen and paper, illustrating the realization that those two things could summon pharaohs and queens with just one thought. So to middle school, I took a backpack full of Dr. Seuss treasures, candy apple juice boxes, pen and notebook, and I set out to further my education. But I wish my grade school teachers would have told me that creativity is reserved for the young, because that's what the world seemed to believe. Year after year, my education began to unravel, and it became more structured. It wasn't an education to help the astronaut pirates to my left, or all those firefighters to my right learn how to develop their own individual strengths. It was an education that fit us inside one predetermined box. See, this Egyptian sticky-fingered da Vinci was just now a generalized form-fitted student. It was like recess began to morph into gym, where chin-up bars transformed. <laughs> Well, there were once monkey bars, and then they transformed into chin bars. And then art classes, they became exercises of rendering instead of creating. It was like now the students were just blank machines that the teachers never learned how to solve that equation of how to communicate to. High school was like the awkward, acne-infested transition that only prepared you for a 9-to-5 tiresome routine. Each day I spent in public high school, I just wanted to crawl into a locker and reminisce on that time where school seemed to reach that girl who deep sea dove in her backyard sandbox and that boy who memorized the constellations like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. But I don't want to forget the painful drag of my darkest hours on paper. How the ink from my soul is as black as my sins. How it can be spread out into images and metaphors and meaning. How words can command an audience more than paintings or fireworks showers. How useless it all is if you can't share your perspective of the skyline. I've been known to staple yellow daisies to my eyelids just to fool the world into thinking I've seen the sun before. That I've held a woman like a languid army of orchids in my chest. That I'm here now. 
branching out into sounds and echoes, screeching and hatching to be heard, I'll take the pitfalls and obscenities and segregation and time running out, because if you take the highs and lows out of life, all you're left with is a flat lighting cardiogram. Art is what gives you the room to grow, to sprout papyrus wings to seize the world. See, those kids who used to spend each day anxiously begging to learn, now memorize just enough to skip past that history test. They settle for mediocrity and with blinded ears don't hear the symphonies in life. It's like the popsicle students, they just melt into the desk as if the teacher's lessons were lullabies. These kids began counting on jigsaw fingers and toes, then hopscotching straight to trigonometry, never learning how to build that Lego bridge. Number one on my list is Strive to make new memories. I left a blank space in the middle of my paper to write them down, too. I pressed my dreams along the spine of my notebook next to a 17-year-old flower just to remind myself that beauty can be found in existence even after we've been placed in an urn or a coffin or a vase. I'll rip recollection from God's hand like the ivy drip my great-grandfather so often rips from his veins. I'll become more than potpourri strewn on the floor of history. You only have one chance to become an enigma. See, we need an engineer. Miss Williams, my third grade fashion icon. Or Miss Bats, the sorcerer who spurred the inner artist inside me. Or Miss Stiff, the angel I could run to whenever that hell of depression surrounds me so I won't fade into the high-pitched bells and crowded highway hallways. We need educators with an imagination who can transform arithmetic into architecture and essays into movies. I don't wish that high school could transform back to elementary naps and animal crackers, although that would be nice. But I just hope that all those people who say that youth is wasted on the young, they would realize that they are partially to blame. Because as time speeds by, adults seem to contain themselves more and more into specific, categorized bubbles. If youth is really wasted on the young, then creativity is just a disease that adults are immune to. Wow.